Hello, hello, hello. Welcome this evening and uh, hi, hi everybody. It's Chris Andrew, of course. And uh, well, what a beautiful day it has been. A lovely day um, at work. You know, it's a Friday, of course. So yeah, I'm naturally going to be a little bit on the happier side, especially on the Friday. But uh, also very happy about how things have turned out today. I mean, um, well, today, I think you know, if I probably titled this video in the proper way, I would, I would probably label it the day that we witnessed the death of the ITK. And I, for one, I am totally and utterly here for it. I trust, you know, trust me, man. I really am totally and utterly here for that because I have just been sick to death of every summer. You know, if, 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 if we're not, uh, if, if we're linked to their, their players and then none of them come in or one of them comes in or somebody completely different comes in, then you just hear the same old crap just, just emanate, just like a, oh, what about uh, player one or two? Shows lack of ammunition because nobody for sure knows if we were in for those players or not, or if we were. Does he owe you to go with that than it is to actually, uh, you know, to actually, as you say, oh, well, maybe, just maybe, he, he wasn't the player that we were after. Still run with this shit, and it's it's great to me. It, yeah, and people still run with this shit, and it just it just grates with me. It really, really does. So I am here for it. And the reason why I say all this, I mean, I really record this at lunchtime, but um, my camera died at death, so I couldn't upload it. So it was, uh, it was unfortunate, but so I had to wait till the evening. But still, I was smiling all the way through because you know the re the reason why I'm saying this is because Spurs have bought a player that was under everybody's radar and i loved it i mean i told you bought players we, we, we bought two in fact um we bought a player for the men's team we bought a player for the women's team i know that the uh the women's team doesn't get that much coverage from the it case and that's uh, unfortunate but uh it is what it is um they just focus on the men's team and and that's where yeah i guess that's where all the money lies but um yeah um so we bought a player. Oh my days! I just I just rolling through that. Um, I was also playing at the the, the um, EFL, like Dream Team, and Sammy Smots just left Blackburn for uh, Ipswich. That means I have to change my team. God damn it! But no, back to back to, back to the topic. We have signed Burnley's young, nineteen-year-old France youth international Wilson uh, Wilson Odebert. and. Nobody predicted that this was going to happen. Nobody saw this happening at all. Nobody saw it happening. And those all got coming. Oh my God. That was, that is amazing. That is beautiful. I mean, the way that um, Johan Langer works is music to my ears. Music to my ears. Because I've been sitting throughout this whole entire summer listening to people say, oh, we're going to get Eze. Eze is going to come. Uh, if, if Eze doesn't come, that shows a lack of um, uh, ambition from the club. If Eze doesn't come, you know, that shows that they... Uh, this, that this team are not serious. Uh, Ange Postacoglu's um, wish list. No one's ever said that. It's just the ITKs that are coming up with this bullshit and people are just lapping it up. And, ah, oh, the day, the day that, I mean, the, the moment this, that this dropped... That we assigned Wilson or the Bear, and it's not that he's even a bad player, but I've already seen what um, people are saying about it. But let me tell you about it if you don't know. Wilson or the Bear, um, France um, youth international, 19 years old, and we've agreed to sign him from Burnley. We, some people may remember him from uh, last season, where he was very, very attacking down. The, I think he was down the um, down the right hand side for us uh, for, for them at the time. Um, and he kind of tore us to shreds, although, you know, we handled them. But at the same time, we, he, he, he did do the business. And, you know, it was, it was very, 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 very good to see. Um, just seeing that Conor Gallagher is at um, Atletico Madrid. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, he even scored over the weekend. And I'm sure he provided an assist for Burnley in their victory. But um, I know that he scored at the very least. Um, so, um so, yeah, I mean, a, a, a little bit of a background on him. He came through the academy at Paris Saint-Germain before moving to the Trois in July 2022, where he scored four goals and 32 appearances for a winger. 
not bad at all, not bad at all. Um, and that earned him a move to Burnley, where he became the Clarets' youngest ever Premiership Premier League goal scorer um, in October 23, when he scored against Chelsea. Um, during his time at Turf Moor, he made 34 appearances, scoring five goals. So the guy knows how to score in the Premier League too. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm all for this. I'm all for this. 19 years old, such a ceiling on him. On the international stage, he defeated for France across the very numerous age uh, groups, and is currently France's under-21 international. You know what I'm saying? So the boy has scored in the Premier League because we saw it last, last season, and he kept that out. While Burnley or a guy that is flexible enough to fit into the Ange system, and we've seen what he can do. He can get to the ball, he can take players on, and he can beat players. He can put crosses in high or low. It doesn't matter where it is. So with, so with Solanke in, 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 in our forward line, he's good at it, good with his head. That's brilliant. Ball across the ground is where um, the likes of our, our uh, left winger should be coming in. So Sun will have a, a lot of fun as well. And even if he plays on the, on the left, you know, in, it's the same kind of business. We'll have Kulosevsky or we'll have uh, Johnson coming in on, on, you know, on, on, on yeah, in, into the byline to, to actually mop those up. So... A very good player, and we signed him for 30 uh, there's 25 million pounds with add ons, which could rise to 30 million. And you know what? I've already seen people complaining about this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Burnley are never going to sell one of their one of their young, up and coming, promising players for us on the cheap. And so, we got a promising player for 30 million pounds. But I already got people, already seen people on X. I mean, I, I very, I very rarely venture into there, but you know, um, when people post it in the group. You didn't see it. Um, people saying eight million pounds, so sorry, 25 million pounds, he's only worth eight. You know, what are we doing? This and the other laughing emojis. It's crazy. You know what I mean? And uh, these are the same man who will, will go out there and, sh and shout that uh, we should pay the money, pay what the club asks when the player is worth 130 odd million pounds and 28 years old and has probably only got a few years left on, you know, a top flight football. They just can't make up their goddamn minds. That's what I'm saying. And uh, like I said, because of the ITK is feeding this bullshit, I'm here for this, man. I'm here for this. Here for it. All the way, man. And I'm you know, I'm delighted for the player. Wilson Older Bear is going to be an absolute baller for us. I don't know how many people have mentioned in the group that um, Older Bear could block the pathway of um, of um, uh, Mikey Moore. That's not, that's not going to be the case. We need, We've been talking about the, the lack of debt. That's what the main thing was that people were talking about last season, that we had the lack of depth in the, in the squad. So after that Chelsea -ish, uh, Chelsea game at um, at home, where we had a couple of players sent off and a couple of players injured, there was a complete and utter lack of depth, which, contrib which contributed to our uh, disastrous run of form to, you know, in, in those 10 games afterwards. And then uh, obviously we had Basuma have um, get himself sent off. So we had lots of suspensions, bare injuries. And, we, and with that small squad, we couldn't really cope. And now we're getting players to you know, actually fill out the squad, but also of quality as well. So they can, so, you know, so they're not just padding the bench. They can also start as well. And I imagine that Otto Bear will get a few chances, but get a few starts. Mikey Moore will get a few starts. I mean, Ange did say he's going to keep Mikey Moore um, around to you know to, to to get that experience and to get a few games. So it is going to be so it's not going to be a case of him just sitting there rotting away. We have we're going to have actually have a squad that can actually compete. And this is what we want to see. And this is what we want, isn't it? A deep squad. Um, I know that um, there are a couple of people complaining about um, having the likes of uh, Solanke and uh, Rich Richarlison in, in the same squad. Different types of players. But they're saying, you know, most top flight teams only have one striker. But we got two. So if there's an injury to one, we're not going to actually um, worry about it. I don't quite get this whole need to just talk about how things are going to benefit the first 11. These players will benefit the first 11, but they also will pad out the bench as well. So that if there's any injuries, I pad out the squad as well. So if there's any injuries or any suspensions, there are players ready made to come up to like, and actually play the system. And we won't see a drop off in quality. But people are already talking about there's going to be a lack of quality because they don't see what, um, what anyone else sees in order bear. And that's going to be a thing. I mean, is it, I mean, he's going to, he's no there, but um, you know, at least he is malleable. And at least he'll be here for a long, long time. Right, until he decides to sell him or decides to go back to Paris Saint Germain, I imagine. I think he's from Paris. So um so yeah, that'll always be the pool. I Meaning you know, was, um was at the Academy of Paris Saint Germain. So I imagine that um if Paris Saint Germain do come in, would do want to come in for him, 
about five or six years down the line, then it might be a little bit hard to keep him. But imagine if we are competing and winning stuff, he'll find it very hard to uh, to leave to, to go to go back home. And that's what we want to try and do. We want to try to get a squad that's capable of doing that that, that, that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, so I'm, so I'm all here for it. And the fact that it was so under the radar shows that Johan Lager just doesn't tease man with any of this rubbish. So, you know, you just know when there is literally next to no stories about a player that we're more likely to go for him than the ones where we've got bare stories about uh, about about a player almost getting close to signing or just uh, a few pounds off the... Uh, the uh, oh, that's the bit that annoys me as well. We're just a, a £5 million short of uh, of the asking price. We just we got about the meets halfway and stuff like that. And then you got people going, pay the money! It's never going to be that case. It's never going to be, be, be a case like that. If we want a player, we're going to get the player and it's going to be on the down low. And that's what I want to see. I'm tired of just having stuff run through the media like this. And I'm just tired of people using that as a, some kind of stick to beat the club with if they don't get the player that they think that, that the club should be getting. And uh, it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy. But welcome, Wilson Odebear. And I know you're going to do great for us. You will do great for us. And I am and I am here for it. Real and well and truly here for it. Can't wait to see you strutting your stuff. And apparently, he has been signed in time. To play this week, uh, week also this weekend on Monday, I guess. Um, so he's been signed in time, and he's already got match fitness. He's already had a preseason behind him, and he, the way he kind of plays with fits, we just slot into our system straight away. Anyway, so um, so yeah, um, who knows? Might he be on the bench on uh, on Monday? We'll look forward to seeing it. But um, he is registered in time to play on Monday. So uh, this squad is already starting to take shape man is always like to take shape and i cannot wait to see it all he joins um, a real young squad which has um, um archie gray which has lucas, lucas bergfall it has all these men that are uh, just champing at the bit wait, waiting to uh to start for us and i cannot wait to see it all anyway and uh so uh yeah again welcome welcome wilson uh, and uh, looking forward to seeing you uh he's gonna have the number th um 29 shirt by the sorry number 28 shirts so um was that uh, Tongi and Dombele's number? Uh, I want to say that was what uh, uh, that it was, but if it wasn't, then and, um, yeah. Anyway, he's got the number twenty-eight, and um, this contract runs until twenty twenty-nine. So I cannot wait to see him in action. So I did mention that uh, we did sign another player, and this is all for the women's team. And this is another one that um, I didn't see coming really, coming straight out of left left field. Um, it is um, Claire Hunt um, from. Uh, yeah, she's also, we also she's also from Paris Saint Germain, but she's directly from Paris Saint Germain, Australian international, um, and uh, yeah, she's subject to our international clearance and work visa, which shouldn't be a problem. She's an Australian international, and she has been playing in Europe for a time now. So um, it's a uh, you know it's good, it'll be good to see her. I mean, she is a um, Jesus. I want to say she's a midfielder, but I think she's probably a forward. Um, I think she's a midfielder um, from. Um, uh, from Paris Saint Germain, so um, yeah, sign her, and she's going to be with us until 2027. So uh, a nice three-year contract, and she'll be rated number 15. So um, yeah, welcome, welcome Claire, and uh, more and more big players coming to the women's team. We finished fifth last season. We want to try and push for Europe. That's what I want to see. And um, with, um, with the, it looks like it's going to be the, the demise of Manchester United. Despite what they what they did last season, I mean they kind of fell away really badly, didn't they? And um, if we can pit them, I mean we've got a friendly come up against them actually in um, uh, yeah, early September. So um, hopefully we turn them over and then we do the business, um, do the business in the league. That's what I want to see. Man. That's what I want to see. But uh, a bit of a background on um, on Claire Hunt. She um, well born in a town called Grenfell in Australia. Uh, she started off her career at a camp. United and progressed through the academy to make a professional debut for the A-League side in November 2016. So she has got a lot of experience, full of experience. Uh, during the time of the Australian Capitals, she, uh, oh sorry, she's a defender. My my bad, my bad. I don't know why I thought she was a midfielder, just kind of, yeah. But she's a defender and uh, she studied at the University of Sydney and represented women's football team during the National Premier League in the first, uh, in the National Premier League in the, in the off-season before joining A-League side, Western Sydney Warriors, uh, WS Wanderers, if, uh, if you know, you know, uh, September 21. 
Um, she was named the captain in her second season, so it shows that she's a leader as well. We need more and more, we need more and more leaders in, in that team, and uh, lots of experience too. Um, and featuring in all but one of the A League uh, games, uh, she was voted PFA A League A League's team of the season, and subsequently handed the first call up the Australian squad. Uh, spending seven seasons in a native country, the defender move would make a move to Paris Saint Germain in twenty in September twenty three. So she's only been there for a season, featured in thirteen games in the top flight, helping her side to finish second in the table. Wells also lifting the French Cup. French Cup, uh, beating Fleury uh, 1-0 in the final in May 24. So, and uh, she's only there for a season, but already won a trophy. We need more of them. Man. We need more of them. Uh, on the international stage, uh, Claire made a senior debut uh, for the Australian national team in tw February 23 and was later selected uh, for the World Cup later on that year. Uh, uh, featuring in all seven games, in seven, in seven games of the Matildas, the recent semi-final. Uh, and she was including the tournament's All-Star 11, so you might remember her from that. Uh, she was named in the 2024 Olympic squad last month, playing every single minute during the campaign in, in Paris. So, so she comes with a lot of pedigree. She comes with a lot of experience, and she comes with leadership skills. And uh, that year, that season in, um, in Paris, Paris Saint-Germain would have done her the, done her the world of good because she would have played it in Europe as well. So, so we're getting all these people now to. to um, it, in, in the squad to actually do the business. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's fantastic stuff. So yeah, welcome to Tottenham, Claire Hunt. And uh, yeah, that team is taking shape too, man. The team's like, we, we've signed three players now for the women's side from what I last recollection. So um, yeah, I think we signed seven for the men's. So um, yeah, it's taking shape, man. It's taking shape. Um, I did mention um, uh, the, uh, Otter Bears uh, and uh, Hunt's number there. And Solanke's number has been has been confirmed. He'll be wearing the number nineteen, um, and he'll be sh and he'll be wearing that on uh, Monday night in the game against Leicester City. Uh, so, so yeah, I didn't actually know Dom uh, so Solanke's name was a uh, double barrelled Actually, he just uses the first bit. It's, uh, the other part of his name is Mitchell, from what I understand. Um, so double barrelled like me. As we know, as Nigerians know how to roll, man. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, is it is his shirt's name will have Dominic? Uh, shirt specialization with Dominic's name and number, so he will have Solang Solange in the back and number nineteen is available in the club shop now. So uh, there we go. Um, so yeah, so he'll be wearing number nineteen. Or the bear will be wearing the twenty eight. Uh, Hunt when she joins us, she'll be wearing the fifteen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all looking good, man. It's all looking good. Other news. Other news. Well. The Women's League League Cup, uh, the Continental Cup, as uh, as we all know it. Um, the group stage draw has been confirmed. So here are the details. Um, well, the draw hasn't been done yet, but the let's see the draw. Let's see, draw details will be confirmed. That's what I meant to say. Um, so it will take place on the Monday, at three thirty p.m. If I, uh, I'll, I'll try and bring you news of that if I can. Um, it'll be show, it'll, be, it'll be made live on uh, on Talk Sport 2's social show at 3 30. So, um, yeah, um, so we'll try and bring news of that. Uh, looking forward to that one, especially after our uh, after our good performance uh, last season where we only got knocked out by uh, I want to say Chelsea, I think, in the, in the quarterfinals. So, um, this this is um, you know, we are showing no, it was Manchester City, sorry, in the quarterfinals because we played Manchester City over th in three games in a short space of time, didn't we? And one of them's culminated in us beating them in the uh, quarterfinals of the FA Cup. So um, yeah, yeah, looking good, man, looking good. Uh, our ball number, we are draw obviously in the in the southern section, and um, we are ball number twelve. Only twelve out of twelve out of twelve by the looks of it. Um, so let's see, you've got the northern section which has eight teams. The southern section has twelve teams. So it looks like uh, three three groups in the southern section. Uh, three groups of four. Um, and the yeah, the first four numbers out of the bag will be placed in group C. The next four numbers will be placed in group D, and then the final four will be placed in group E. So, um, yeah, the northern sections are A, so I will we'll be A, A, and B, the southern sections C, D, and E. Um, to the group stages and um, dates, if you want, are on the website as well. Um, and, um, 
yeah, it is uh it is gonna be an interesting one. We'll try and bring you the draw for that one and um uh well we'll bring the draw results because obviously I'll be working there. So uh yeah, looking forward to that one because I do love a cup and we're getting closer and closer to winning a cup there with the women's team, man. We really are. Um, after our little sojourn to the final um, of the FA Cup last season, where we were sort of uh, dealt a bit of a blow by Manchester United, but that won't be happening again, especially after Manchester United's somewhat seeming divide, uh, demise. Looks like um, we'll be um, we'll be doing doing the business now. Hopefully, we will get to lift a trophy um, with the women's team. Other news, uh, Leighton Orient will be stepping up Jamie Donnelly. Not like that, don't worry, calm down. Jamie Donnelly has extended his contract with Spurs until 2029, and he'll be joining Leighton Orient on loan for the remainder of the 2024-25 season. So he'll be getting his ex he'll be getting experience out there, and um, obviously we have a bit of a, a good relationship with Leighton Orient, so I'm um, hoping you look after our Jamie, because he's going to be an important cog come the future. Um a bit of a background on that one. Um, he joined the club, joined the at the age of eight and progressed through the ranks. Played an integral part in the youth side, that claimed the under, 20, under 17 and 18 Premier League Cup du uh, double um, in 22-23. Last time featured regularly in our title-winning under 21s uh, campaign, uh, where we won the won the league and also won the overall thing by beating uh, Sunderland in the final, wasn't it? Uh, in the midst of that uh, season, the last season that is in December 23. He earned his first team debut when he came off the bench uh, for the full team against Manchester City um, in that uh, game uh, up at uh, uh, up at the Etihad. Now, today he's made four uh, senior appearances in our colours in all competitions on the international stage. Jamie has represented England uh, up to um, under-19 level to date and has previously featured for Northern Ireland's youth teams. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's dual national, but I'm sure he's going to be playing for England for in the foreseeable future so yeah that is the current news right now but um me i'm just gassed up for the uh the fact that uh this looks like the season where the itks as far as tottenham are concerned died a horrible death and i'm loving it loving it loving it loving it because now i'll probably just dampen down a whole the rubbish about uh you know, the players we should have been getting and nobody knows for sure, but apparently because we've been linked with them in the press, it's not going to happen anymore. We are going to be running things privately, and that's how Johan Lano rules the, the roost, man. And that's what I want to see. That's all I wanted to see. I've hated, I mean, even going back to the time when uh, you had Harry Redknapp pulling up in his car to talk to the press about what's going on. I hated all that. Hated every little bit of that. And now, and now, I mean, even when uh, um, when Paratici was um, in in his pomp and he used to do so many different deals at once, and then just strike on the one that, you, that was more likely to go through. But then again, by that time, everybody's got you know, um, gotten a whiff of what's going on. This way, there'll be less of the likes of um, of a William being done because we're just running things on the down low. That's what I want to see. That's all I want to see. I hate running things through the press. I hate having to do things like this publicly. And now. And now, well, from what I can see, it is happening. It is happening, and I'm loving it. Yo, and Alanga is probably the best thing to happen to Spurs. I mean, not not I'm dissing um, Paratici's work. I mean, he's got some real gems, but at the same time, I just hated the way that everything was uh, it, that everybody knew who the targets were, and then it was up to us to try and uh, and then uh, you know figure out which one are we actually going for. This one is perfect, and I uh, cannot thank Langer enough. Um, welcome to the club, Otter Bear. Welcome to the club, Hunt. And uh, looking forward to Monday already, Monday evening. Uh, we'll be having the live stream, of course. Um, uh, me and Shoes will be presenting that. Uh, the opening game, I mean, the games, the, the Premier League starts tonight with Manchester United taking on Fulham as they are advertising right now. But uh, for me, the season doesn't start until Monday night when the real team comes out. And hopefully, we slap up Leicester City and show them what it's all about. And we put down a marker for how we expect the season to go but i cannot wait looking forward to it monday can't come quick enough man but uh yeah thank you for listening let me know what you think below i mean uh i i've already seen stuff about other bear and whatnot so i mean i'm trying not i'm not even trying to hear it but you let me know what you think uh, of other bear signing in the, in the context of what Ange wants and um let me know if you if you follow the women's game let me know what you think of a uh, claire hunt signing because 
yeah, I mean, she's going she's gonna to be an integral cog, man, especially at defence. I mean, it looks like we're going to be losing a couple in defence too, man. Um, and Shalina Sadorsky, of course, left uh, last season. Uh, at the beginning of last season, went off to West Ham and um, looks like we're going to be losing a couple more. So it is integral that we get that experience back in, in the central defensive uh, in the line and that uh, we get some kind of improving that area. So we shall see. Um, and then, well, and then Solanke's number and a new number, number 19, of course, um, which you'll be seeing on Monday. But uh, let me know what you think. Thank you all for listening. And as always, come on, you Spurs. And as I say, you all take care. See you on Monday.